The age-old civilization of ancient Egypt, well known for its significant achievements, was steeped in traditions that may seem quite peculiar and even disturbing by today's standards. These ranged from odd beauty practices, peculiar culinary habits, to intricate death rites that occasionally involved necromancy. Join us on a riveting journey into their belief system and daily life. Here are the top 10 interesting and to some unpalatable practices that were considered normal in ancient Egypt. Number 10. Inbreeding in Ancient Egypt This bizarre tradition of intermarriage among close relatives was rampant. A notable example is King Tutankhamun or King Tut, who was the result of a sibling marriage. Regrettably, this practice led to various congenital defects and physical irregularities in King Tut. Despite these obstacles, he emerged as one of the most influential and celebrated rulers of Egypt. A surprising discovery was made during the inspection of King Tut's preserved body. His mummified form was found with an erect phallus. A 2014 study offered a rather disturbing reason for this unique phenomenon. It was suggested that this burial method was used to suppress a religious uprising initiated by his own father. Further inquiry revealed the symbolic meaning behind King Tut's burial pose. He was intentionally positioned this way to mirror Osiris, the revered god linked with the afterlife. By mimicking Osiris's appearance, King Tut's burial was thought to guarantee his smooth passage into the divine world, ensuring his eternal life. While these practices may be uncomfortable to contemplate, it's important to remember that they were deeply rooted in the cultural beliefs and customs of ancient Egypt. Their societal norms regarding kinship and religious symbolism may seem confusing to us today. At number 9, we have the practice where deceased women were left to decompose. In the land of grand pyramids and mysterious pharaohs, an intriguing ritual would take place when a man died. His journey to the afterlife began immediately as expert embalmers preserved his body for eternity. However, with women, the procedure was quite different. By law, the deceased women of influence were left unattended by embalmers until their bodies had decomposed for three to four days. Why this practice? It's a story of trust and fear that might make your skin crawl. Ancient Egypt faced a significant challenge. Trust was rare, especially when it involved the dead sanctity. The Egyptians had a hard lesson. Embalmers couldn't control their desire for the departed women. Indeed, those responsible for the holy task of preserving the dead failed to respect the bodies. The audacity is hard to fathom. Legend tells us that a diligent co-worker stumbled upon a shocking scene, an embalmer engaged in inappropriate acts while preparing a royal body. The horrified co-worker reported the desecration, resulting in a public scandal that sent shockwaves through the kingdom. After that incident, rulers were wary about entrusting their deceased queens to their workers. Hence, a rule was put in place, establishing a waiting period. The women were no longer immediately prepared for the afterlife. They were left to decompose, their bodies carefully watched over as time took its toll. After three or four days of quiet decay, the embalmers were finally called to fulfill their sacred duty. This delay created a sense of anticipation and suspense, stirring up whispers and rumors and adding a veil of mystery around the deceased women. This waiting game became a spectacle, a grim dance capturing hearts and minds across the land. This tale of Egyptian embalming, intertwined with trust, suspicion, tradition, and fear, still echoes through history, reminding us that even in death, the custodians of eternity can be corrupted by earthly desires. At number 8, we have the Fertility Festival. The ancient Egyptians held a unique belief, the universe was born from the essence of their god, Atum. According to legend, this powerful deity achieved creation through self-gratification, and when he climaxed, life sprang forth. But what does this have to do with the Great Nile? The Nile, Egypt's life-giving river, was believed to be connected to Adam's divine release. It was thought that the flow of this powerful river mirrored the number of times Adam bestowed his cosmic gift. To honor their god and ensure the Nile's generous sustenance, the pharaohs embarked on a remarkable homage. The pharaoh, Egypt's revered leader, would stand on the riverbank and perform the sacred act of self-gratification, symbolically replicating Autumn's crucial contribution to creation. This act evolved into a cherished ritual, which the pharaoh carried out annually as a testament to his bond with the gods. However, the pharaoh was not alone in this exceptional ritual. The male participants, full of expectation and faith, joined him in this ancient practice. Together, they cast off their clothes, embracing their human vulnerability, and followed their leader's example. This shared experience was believed to increase blessings and ensure a bountiful harvest for the entire kingdom. This grand celebration was known as the Fertility Festival. 
a time when the line between mortals and gods was blurred. This was a vibrant festival, filled with enthusiasm and anticipation, as the Egyptians believed that through their collective dedication, they could secure the fertility and abundance of their lands, transport your imagination back in time to a period when pharaohs stood at the crossroads of divinity and humanity, envision the grandeur of the Nile, observe the pharaoh's solemn yet awe-inspiring act, and feel the sense of unity and hope that echoed through the hearts of all participants. The Egyptians' faith in the creative power of autumn's climax and their commitment to the fertility festival represents a fascinating part of human history. At number seven, we have the intriguing hair loss solutions of the ancient Egyptians. Detailed in the captivating Ebers Papyrus, an ancient medicinal record believed to be from 1550 BCE, these unusual treatments, though somewhat distasteful, offer insight into the imaginative lengths the Egyptians would go to maintain a full head of hair. The Egyptians would cook a leg from a female greyhound in oil, combined with a donkey's hoof. The resulting concoction would then be applied to their scalps in the hopes of promoting hair growth. Prior to this, the ingenious Egyptians sought the aid of their sun god, reciting a magical charm while drinking a peculiar beverage composed of a mix of onions, red lead, iron, alabaster, and honey. Moreover, they attempted to stimulate hair growth by massaging the fat from various animals, such as hippos, lions, ibexes, crocodiles, serpents, tomcats, and geese onto their scalps. Despite the likely unpleasant smell, the Egyptians remained undeterred. If these exotic remedies failed, they turned to alternative solutions, such as wigs and fake beards, to uphold their desired aesthetic, avoiding reliance on their unique treatments. The peculiar methods used by ancient Egyptians to combat hair loss, though seemingly revolting by contemporary standards, showcase their determination and resourcefulness in pursuit of lush, full hair. At number six is the ancient Egyptian punishment for criminals. Ancient Egyptians held a strong fascination with the afterlife and revered their sun god. Any disrespect towards the deity was seen as a grave offense. Serious transgressions were rare, but the worst act one could commit was to offend the sun god. Those who dared to rob or vandalize a temple, utter disrespectful words towards the god, or engage in any offensive action would face the severe punishment of being burned alive. This gruesome punishment was solely for severe offenders and involved a ritualistic human sacrifice where the offender was offered to the gods. The act of burning a person alive symbolized total destruction of their spiritual vessel, resulting in the denial of their opportunity to progress to the afterlife, a concept cherished by the ancient Egyptians. From our modern perspective, the idea of inflicting such a cruel fate on another person is deeply disturbing. However, it is critical to understand the cultural and religious beliefs that guided the ancient Egyptian sense of justice. At number five is the peculiar trend of voluntary baldness in ancient Egypt. Lice infestations were widespread in ancient Egypt, even within the tombs of Egyptian rulers. Frustrated with this widespread problem, both men and women chose to shave off all their hair. Wigs were often worn by women as a convenient alternative, as they could easily be discarded and replaced when infested with lice. Some individuals even shaved their entire bodies to avoid lice-related issues. While this practice might seem revolting today, it was a practical approach given the circumstances. Their decision to go bald was driven not by aesthetics, but by the necessity of getting rid of persistent lice infestations. At number four, we have the ancient practice of catcalling. Even during religious festivals, when communities gathered for spiritual unity, Egyptian men couldn't resist indulging in this detestable behavior. The Greek historian Herodotus witnessed such an event when men would ferry their families to the sacred city of Bubastis. As they sailed through towns along the river, these men would shamelessly catcall and harass women. Herodotus described how these men would shout loudly, make rude comments, and even expose themselves by lifting their garments. This behavior illustrates the deeply ingrained nature of catcalling and the historical trend of men objectifying women in public spaces, disregarding their dignity and consent. Even though our modern society has made progress in recognizing and challenging such behavior, we must continue our efforts to eradicate this disrespectful and degrading practice. It's disheartening to realize that women in ancient Egypt had to endure such vulgar treatment, even during religious festivities. Number three is the laxative regimen of the ancient Egyptian nobility. Despite their often full-figured representations, Egyptian royals harbored fears of overeating. 
The standard of male beauty at the time leaned towards lean and fit physiques. To help achieve this ideal, they would use a method that might seem unsavory to us today. Once a month, they would ingest a natural laxative made from castor oil, which gently stimulated their digestive systems. After consuming this concoction, they would then brace themselves for a day dedicated to the toilet. It is important to point out that the advanced concept of plumbing didn't exist back then, leading the royals to manually handle the resulting cleanup. The royal class often used these laxatives to relieve various body discomforts, and they didn't shy away from this method even when faced with diarrhea. Their approach was simple, expel the illness quickly and efficiently. While this practice may seem distasteful to us, it underscores the ancient Egyptians' commitment to health and beauty ideals and provides a unique insight into their cultural practices. Number two is mummy powder. This peculiar tradition, which may seem shocking today, involved the use of mummy powder made from ground-up mummified remains. This practice wasn't limited to Egypt, but peaked in Europe during the Middle Ages, persisting well into the 16th and 17th centuries. Despite its off-putting nature, mummy powder was believed to possess remarkable healing properties and was used as a medicinal remedy. The tradition can be traced back to ancient Egypt, where it was thought that consuming mummy powder could cure various ailments. The powdered mummies were often mixed with other substances to create potent medicinal mixtures. This ingestion was thought to have the power to heal wounds, cure diseases, and even extend one's lifespan. This belief stemmed from the principle of sympathetic magic, in which consuming something associated with a desirable trait could imbue the consumer with that trait. In this case, the long life and immortality associated with mummies were believed to be transferred to the consumer. While we may find this practice repugnant today, it highlights the ancient Egyptians' immense interest in the magical properties of mummies and their early ventures in the field of medicine. It also underlines their belief in the strong connections between the physical and spiritual realms. Despite our modern revulsion, it is crucial to recognize the historical context and beliefs of the time. Number one is the practice of ancient birth control. Compared to our modern methods, Ancient techniques are surprisingly archaic. While condoms and pills are commonplace today, let's journey back to ancient times to uncover the shocking birth control practices of the ancient Egyptians. It involved a repellent mixture of honey and crocodile dung applied to women's private areas. The Egyptians believed that this unusual combination acted as an effective spermicide. The mere thought of smearing crocodile feces on one's intimate areas is, frankly, nauseating. While their motivations may have been justifiable, the potential consequences of this bizarre method are rather disturbing. In the context of their limited knowledge, the ancient Egyptians may have thought that this unpleasant mixture was effective. However, in reality, it could have actually increased the chances of conception, ironically leading to the very outcome they were trying to prevent. So, let's appreciate the advancements of modern birth control and bid a hearty goodbye to the disturbing crocodile dung and honey mixture of the ancient world. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.